What's going on? Jeremiah here from Babbling in My Backyard. In this video, we're going to get the footer put in for the greenhouse. So let's get to it. One thing I would like to say is this has been posted as a vlog instead of a how-to video. I mean it is kind of a how-to video is the way that I'm putting it together but it's really a vlog because I'm not a concrete worker. I have mad respect for concrete workers actually. My uncles both do concrete work and it is an art form for sure. If you are not a concrete worker you can do concrete work but it's never going to turn out as good as somebody who actually knows what they're doing in this field. But this is a kind of a do-it-yourself channel, so I'm showing how I did it myself. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is figure out where this greenhouse is gonna sit. I know how big the greenhouse is gonna be. I know it's gonna be 16 feet long and nine feet wide. I know I can make that fit back here. However, I don't exactly know where it's going to sit, so I'm gonna do some measurements to try to figure out where I'm going to place this thing exactly. So this first spot that I thought would work is a little off. Um, it's going to be too much blocking a window on the house, so I'm going to move it back towards the front of the house a little bit. This seems like it's going to be the spot that works for me, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I need to dig a trench in the where the foundation is going to be so that I can put a footer in, a gravel footer, and then I'll pour the foundation on top of that. What I discovered pretty quickly as I was trying to dig this trench was that there is a ton of gravel already in this dirt. So it seems that somebody, when they put this back here, they already filled it with a lot of gravel. Uh, so it's not shoveling so easily. So I have to break it up with my claw and that way I can shovel some out and then I'll go through, go around, break it up, shovel some out, break it up, shovel some out. The gravel that I'm using to fill in this space is 3 quarter minus and then I'm packing that down. The next thing I gotta do is get my level in place on the pad that exists already. I'm gonna be using part of that pad so my foundation goes around and meets the pad on both sides. So I'm gonna put the level on the pad and then get an idea of where I am with gravel as I've been putting gravel into place here and that way I can figure out where I need to add gravel and where the gravel's too high if it's too high anywhere and then I should be able to move forward to putting my forms in for my foundation. So I'm spray painting on the gravel down here pluses if I need to add Okay, so I'm ready to move on to putting in my forms. So I want the forms to be equal height 
as the concrete slab that's already here because I want to have a smooth transition for my framing to sit on. So I'm going to start by coming off of the slab and keep level from the slab as I keep going all the way around. When I get my additional forms square to the existing start that I've already done, I'm also trying to make sure that they're level, maintaining level as I move down and add more stakes to support it. As well, one thing I'm not showing here is that I'm making sure that the level happens uh, between the two, because if you are slightly off in with your just using a bubble level like this, if you're slightly off, you could be off as you move down further uh, between your two, so you wouldn't have a level the other direction. I'm, I'm level from across my form, but from form to form, from one side of the form to the other side of the form, I need to also make sure that I'm level. As we move from this corner and we go over to this corner over here, I want to talk a little bit about why, why this one looks a little different. Everywhere else, the earth is holding the footer in place, so it's it doesn't need to be that wide. It's only probably nine inches wide um, and probably three inches deep gravel. Um, but once we get over here, it's hard to tell, but that's more like six inches of gravel just to get to the same height that was over here. So this was my lowest point in this whole job. So I needed more gravel, a, a wider base, because earth is not holding it over there. So a much wider base so that the foundation that's going to go here has support outward on all sides and because it's such a deep pack I packed I put gravel and packed put gravel and packed wetted it down packed put gravel and packed put gravel and packed wetted it down packed until I got to this level once my forms are done all the way around I'm gonna start putting gravel at the bottom of the form so that I have some resistance from the concrete to flow under the forms. So I'm going to put gravel in there and then I'm going to use a 4x6 that I have sitting around and pack the gravel down inside of there just because I want a nice packed gravel in there. I don't want it loose. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my rebar. So if you've seen in a previous video, I refurbished a fountain feature, which I turned into a splash pad slash bubbler, uh, which you can see if you want up in the corner here, there's a video. But I had a bunch of leftover rebar that I knew I was going to use for this project. So I've kept it around and now I'm using it to support this concrete. So basically, 
my shorter pieces I'm going to hammer into location and then the longer pieces that I have I'll use those to tie between the rebar stakes. To tie them together it is pretty simple you just take about a six inch piece of wire like this and it's rebar wire and I'm just gonna stick it under the longer pieces and then wrap it up and over and then tighten it with a pair of pliers I just grab a hold of it and twist and twist and twist until it pulls tight and it doesn't fall back down So for the concrete mixing instructions, they tell you to use two quarts of water for one 60 pound bag of concrete. I went inside and I measured two quarts out and then I marked this picture right here on this line. But I have done concrete mixing before and I know that two quarts hadn't worked for me in the past. I'm, my guess is I'm going to have to add more. So it looks like I need to add about three quarts of water in order to get this to be s s somewhat runny enough. It's supposed to be a little like Play-Doh, and this is definitely that way even with three quarts of water. I couldn't really get it mixed well enough with two quarts, so three quarts needed to be the case. How I mix it is I use a concrete mixer in a drill gun like this, and I just throw it into my wheelbarrow, and I start to use my drill gun uh, back and forth, breaking up the powder it first is a good idea, and then trickling that water in over the top of my mixer. And then I come back in with the shovel and I scoop it around and to make sure there's nothing dry still in there. And then I can take it and shovel it into my forms. Once it's in the forums, it's going to be tall up, up high on the forums, and then I'll push it down with my wood float tool, and then I'll come and scoop off the, any excess that I have, trying to make sure that it's pushed into all the corners. The last thing I'm going to do, and unfortunately I waited a little too long on a lot of this because it wasn't quite wet enough to get it nice and smooth, um, but I want to come back through with a finishing tool and round the corner off and kind of smooth the top a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, about a day later I'm going to come back and I'm going to take these forms off. So I'm going to remove all the stakes and then pry the forms away and see what it looks like. It definitely looks like an amateur poured some concrete is what it looks like to me. It'll do the job. I'll be sure that I backfill next with gravel and make sure the gravel is up against that concrete so it has lots of drainage. I don't want dirt against there because I don't want the water to be held against that concrete. It'll just lead to cracking sooner so I'm going to backfill it all with gravel.
once you go ahead and fill that gravel all the way around there up against the concrete then I'm gonna come through with this excess dirt there's a big mound here in the middle it's hard to tell in the video but that's gonna get all leveled out now That does it for this video. Hopefully you saw some things that could help you with doing concrete in your job, um, or at least you found it interesting in the way that I did this. Please make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have not done so already, lots of cool videos on the channel, so please do that. If you are a concrete worker and you saw something that we should have been doing that we didn't do, please make sure you leave that comment down in the bottom so that we can learn from the masters of this trade, because I am not that. We'll see you in the next video.